Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, let me welcome you to Riding Tiger with Tarijit Bhattacharya. And today I have an amazing guest. And my guest is Chris. Chris is from Mexico. And before we begin our interview, let me redefine once again why we call this show as Riding Tiger. You see, when you start your venture, your venture becomes slowly your life. And as an entrepreneur, it is always a risk to start their own venture. And the time that you start, the riding starts. Once you start your riding, you cannot stop. Because if you stop, the tiger will eat you. So there's a fear factor. If you stop, your business will stop. And you need to keep riding it. You need to keep feeding it. And that feeding material is actually money for your business. And you need to understand how much money you should pump in and how much money you should invest in for your next future business growth. So talking about business growth and talking about businesses, I have someone with me. Of course, we know Christian. Christian's full name is Christian Ruel, and uh, he has got a degree of economics from uh, UDEMUR, and he is a BSc in international business from Neoma Business School in France. He has got a diploma in business ethics um, and, oh my God, 10 years of experience <laughs> in the retail industry and consumer goods with two more in the business consulting. Man, welcome to Riding Tiger with Arjit Vanacharya. Thank you, Arjit. Well, I love what you say about the entrepreneurs. Like, we can't stop because once when we start, actually, we, we can stop not for the tiger because our like our soul keep on us like keeping going and going for more going for more going for more and i think that's our spirit like we go for it and we want to make something uh or put our, our, our little uh, spot in the world like we want to make something worth we want to make something uh for the for the people to see and have these benefits from our enterprise true and uh, Christian, uh, let me understand what's your story. How did you started your own company? If you can tell us more about how did you started your venture and why exactly you entered into the real estate industry, it will be great. Well, uh, it's not a fortunate story, actually, Arjit, because uh, I was working in some places there. It's like uh, some superstores and convenience stores in Mexico. And I see all the uh, uh, all the processes they have about the real estate business because actually, we when you have brick and mortar in your process, it's very complicated. And uh, uh, as I am, as I am an economist, I see with some partners uh, who are in Singapore, uh, they work for uh, Moody's International. They send me like the the next process of the prop tech industry, and I say, well. Latin America and Mexico needs for that. We need to evolve this uh, uh, this industry here because I was living in France, I was living in Singapore, I was like uh, traveling around the world, and I see we don't have these uh, these processes to make uh, the, a better living, a better way of, of doing business, a better way of managing your property, managing uh, your decisions to buy or to rent a property, and we and we think why we don't have a company who help us in that matter. I see companies lost millions of dollars for bad administration, for bad decisions, because they they have like this decision, like, I think it's for this part. Uh, I'm trying to do this, but they never have like the right decision to make. And that's why we started property like two years, uh, two years ago for now. So uh, when we start this, this enterprise, we have just one client. This was this one client, like believe in us. Now this client has to sell in dollars, like $500 to, to help the million dollars in two years for us. So I think, okay, I'm doing the right thing. And I'm, I'm helping people to understand the legal process, the financial process, having these decisions. And for Mexico, it's it's a big deal because we don't have a a, a regular market that uh, the government doesn't have this this uh, 
process to make things right. So when we we put this into your phone and you can manage your property or your decisions through here, you have a lot of power, but a lot. So imagine not only as a consumer, but imagine this as a business. <laughs> so you can help people to pay every, all your services, your rent, uh, your loan, having this uh, like uh, history of your of your expense. So you can have more things in your power than you might or or you you imagine to have right now. And we have a lot of problems that in Latin America because we don't know what we are paying off. We just pay. <laughs> so that's why we have this this uh, this growing in in Mexico, and we have to and we want to explore more markets like like Latin America or even Asia, Middle East, Europe, and also North America. Beautiful, beautiful. And talking about the same, uh, I hope Christian, you know that. We started a platform for real estate players, basically to buy. Oh, yeah. I, I actually see it. It's a good. It's a good platform. I see it, I, and I will imagine this. I I, I was uh, talking with a friend, Jorge, in Mexico, uh, and he told me, imagine that you can have the power to put your your properties for everyone. Imagine uh, uh, people who wants to travel around Brazil, Mexico, oh. even Canada. I, have, I want a property there. I have the, the acquisition power to, to have it. And I want to manage from my home, from my phone, not even if I am in this country. But if I want to travel, I want to have a house there. Well, we can be that tool to make that happen. Super. Well, um, so Property Planeta as a platform would love to handshake with you guys and then probably take these things in the next step. And of course, for sure, if you really want to enter into Middle East and a couple of other parts of the world, uh, World Data Summit is the platform where you can get 95 countries uh, direct contact and connect. We'll be happy to have you. But today's discussion is more about you and your life. So you are the hero over here. And the next question to you, Christian, when you started your venture, I'm sure in any venture, there is a need of money. Uh, yes. how, did you, how did you manage? to bootstrap your startup? How did you get the first layer of money? Is it that you earned the money from your previous job and then you invested or you did some partnership or you went for some bank loan? What it is, how did you manage it? Well, the, the first like the first six months, I put the money with, with my family and friends. Uh, actually, <laughs> we started with, I talked with my, uh, with my friends, some uh, uncle and say, I have this idea. I know it will work. Uh, they put some money in my idea and we start like selling. We start selling these services. Uh, and then we put, uh, we have a valuation for a company uh, and we put it on the pre-seed pre -seed round. Uh, we, we fundraise 5 million pesos. It's like, Two hundred dollar, not two hundred, two hundred thousand dollars, and uh, we put the next step of our company. With that, uh, we put all property in some uh, states in Mexico, some regions in Mexico, and when we have a lot of demand, actually, we we are right now in the seed fund, uh, in the seed food raising, and we are trying to to fundraise two point two million of dollars because we want to solidificate our process in Mexico right. and have it to the next level in another country. We're thinking about Canada or maybe Chile or, or Argentina, <laughs> but uh, we, we already have this process in, in Mexico, even in the northern part, very, very strong. Right. So it was a, a, a difficult path, uh, if, you, if I told the truth, uh, because the human resources, uh, the the people it's for me it's like the main goal or the main asset we have as a company it's not the money it's the people because if you have the right people you can do a lot of things but having the right people or the right partnership it's not something about one day it's something you see with the people day by day the inspiration what they want for life that like if they want to grow or they want to put something in the world that it's not there, it's the most difficult part of the of the job. And 
as a founder, the right uh, partners for me, it's it's like something sacred. You need to have the right people, uh, the right connections, and the right the right spirit to to make it happen. Because make it happen something, it's very complicated. I see one interview you you tell that, <laughs> like make it happen. It's one of the most beautiful things you can do, it. and uh, that's that's why Arjit, as I see that, I told I want to do something like Arjit. I want to to put this because for us in Mexico, we have a lot of gaps uh, that we, we need to fulfill. And if we put this on the people's hand that we, they want to know how, how much they spend for living, you have a lot of information. It, it's very, uh, it's very like delightful to see, like, hey, I want, I can't spend this. I'm not going into credit and I'm not going into land. I want this and I can have this. This is my quality of life. So making an, a little improvement, it's a lot for the families in Mexico. So I want to put that in the rest of the world. So it, it's one of our dreams. Super, super. And you know what? Uh, it's true that if you really want to start your venture or if you really want to grow, the main element, the main key element, which works 90% cases is the right team. And when yes. you talk about right team, I have different analogies of understanding team versus employees. Talking about the same, uh, Christian, if you look at any business, there are two different aspects to run the business. One, you as a founder who started the venture and you as a CEO who is running the venture. Some, some people mix it up. Like some people feel that if I am founder, I am the CEO. Some people feel that, you know what? I am a great founder. I'm an idea guy. I can think things, but I cannot be the CEO because sometimes CEO's job is ruthless. And trust me on this. There are yes. things which needs to be done as a CEO, which you cannot do as a founder. And there are decisions which probably you can do as a founder, which may not be think by the CEO. What's your opinion on this, Christian? I think you're you're right. Uh, for example, it's not an easy path. Uh, I need to make some rough decisions about people who was helping me in the beginning. Uh, I take a, a, a rough decision in my team. Uh, you will always have problems. You will always have like this process as uh for people you you need to say goodbye to them to, to one people you need to hire more people you need to have like uh this emotionally it's very heavy like you need to make uh some processes as the objective uh, process uh, each year we have that it's not not a cool thing or not a good thing as everyone says like you need to put even to your partners like you need to do this this year this is our your objectives. I know we're partners, but if you don't do don't do this, you're not part of the team. So it's not a cool part. And I think uh, each startup or scale up reach a level that the founders cannot be the CEO. For example, we ha I have some friends in Mexico. Uh, one of them is a very, very, very uh, successful uh, entrepreneur who just sell his startup to Mastercard. Right. Uh, and uh, he he passed eight years to to bring this uh, to 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 have this success, and for that I was talking with him, and he told me you don't know how how much things I lose to make my goal like real. I lose friendships, I lose communication with people, I lose even family. But it's not like like a beautiful path. Uh, us as founder i know you are a founder too we have and the people don't see this no, they think no. like, ah they the entrepreneurs they are living the dream no it's not a cool part we work like 24 hours per day we are always available to do things we are always looking for business we are having relations we are managing and coordinating everything in your process so it's that 24 7 work because it's your baby. You need to grow it and you need to put something. You, you put your spirit and your soul in it. So yeah. for me, uh, you're right. It, the CEO and the founder, it's not the same. It's not the same process. And when you reach the moment, 
yeah as the founder you need to put <laughs> this on the on another men or, or people hands to coordinate everything on your operations and for that i think it's a um, horrible part because you are parting away from your baby like i put my baby in your hands you know so for me it's a difficult part yes and uh, not only that uh, for everyone of us who are entrepreneurs let me redefine two things or rather let me define two things for all of you guys who will be listening to this uh, interview christian is coming from a very rich corporate background and education background what he told us right now is true in nature as an entrepreneur we are all alone and trust me on this when we try yes. to sleep when you put our head on the on the pillow whether it is cozy or not cozy we can't sleep because there are thought which comes in our mind next day what's going to happen next day what i'm going to do and probably i took a decision which is not very cool for this gentleman i understand he is a nice guy but i have to ask him to leave the organization because he was not performing don't feel that when we take decisions like this we don't get the heat back we also get the heat back when we ask someone please leave in next 30 days because you are not performing we give you 3 months time to update yourself you didn't when we say this in front of that person it hit back to us as well because that's yes. a normal life that's a human being we understand there is a family that he or she needs to take care of as an entrepreneur is the passion that drives us it's not the money so we okay. actually don't run or start our business because we want to only make money we want to make disruption we have to give an option to the society so that if we recruit five people forget about 50 people if we recruit five people i personally believe we are helping the government we are taking five families right we are paying taxes we are helping the country to grow we are helping the bank we are helping the entire ecosystem sometimes we give back without asking we give time to people if you look at business as a businessman businessman usually a person who start their venture for money sometimes it's a side business that people do like uh, somebody started a cafe while doing their job that's not entrepreneurship right that's basically a business that he started so that he can make money as a substitute and if that cafe will work they will leave the job and give full time to the cafe right we do respect it's called running a business an entrepreneur is a person where innovation is involved along with making money and passion right every entrepreneur if you look at christian or the previous uh, interviews everyone is disruptive they wanted to create a platform for the people so that they can get the help out of it christian didn't start in his business just in real estate he started a platform, an app, so that people can come, enlist, and then grow with along with him, right? That's the purpose. Yes. That's the sole purpose of Christian to start his venture. So probably I will talk more about such kind of things in life. And you need to understand, for a person like Christian, who is acting as a CEO, sometimes taking ruthless decision, leadership sometimes are ruthless. And you need to understand that. Leadership doesn't mean you are just giving things like Mother Teresa. That's different kind of leadership. Okay. Here, okay. when you build a company, it's a baby you need to cherish. Think of yourself as a parent. Will you allow someone to hurt your kids? No. You will protect him or her with your all strengths. That's what Christian is doing. That's what I am doing. That's what my friend George is doing. He is another great guy in Mexico, right? I can go on with examples like this, right? So we are all trying to protect our baby so that it can grow someday and a lot of people can get benefit out of it. Coming back to the same, Christian, I have a couple of uh, small uh, shots for you. I call it okay. a rapid fire round. So um, 
I will give you one word and whatever comes in your mind, you can tell me. Okay? Are you ready? Wrestling. Um, yes. Happiness. No, resilience. Okay. So I will give you the word and you, you, you tell me what it feels in your mind. Okay? The word is happiness. What it feels? Happiness. I will sell peace. Super. What is life for you? It's not a word. It's like make it worded. A word. Super. I wanted that answer. What all? Uh, I was selling life, actually. Fire. Patient, like the soul. Soul. Beard. Smile. Like right now, <laughs> my face. <laughs> you know? uh, smile, I was telling, I will tell you, uh, conquer. Now, this is not a word, now this is a line. How will you define success? Leaving something to the world that doesn't have it before you. Amazing. And if I ask you about growth, where do you see yourself after five years, Christian? I want to make more than one million family. Uh, make it like so, or leaving to them something more uh, that I, I can give in to them with my enterprise. Uh, but for me, that is like the success or the growth, like leaving this for them, like I was helping you, even if you don't know, I'm helping you. Super. I'm not going to ask you more questions, but I'm going to give you an uh, explanation for the audience, basically. You see, when I go for a rapid fire, and for all of you, Riding Tiger with Adijit Bhattacharya, we never ever prepare anything with any speaker. Whatever comes from their heart, we try to bring that out. That's the real truth. And if you look at Christian's answer, he is not looking for making a million dollar after five years. He wants to make living for a million people so that they can sustain. Money is a byproduct for him. A lot of respect, a lot of love, a lot of hugs from me to you, Christian. I wish I'm there in Mexico. I wish. COVID is not there. I wish we can meet face-to-face -face at the moment and we could have done it face-to-face. -face. I did that earlier with lots of entrepreneurs, but I'm sure within a couple of years, we'll be able to be in the normal life and I can probably fly to you. A lot of respect and love once again from me, another brother from another mother of yours from India. Thank you so much, Christian, for coming here and sharing your insights and your details. For the audience, please tell us about your company in a brief so that they can get in touch with you and tell us how they can get in touch with you. Is there a mail ID? Is there a social media account? How they can connect you back? Please, Christian. Well, uh, please follow oldproperty.mx and also in Facebook and Instagram. Uh, as me, you can uh, search for me as Christian Real Gonzalez in LinkedIn, in Facebook, my uh, social media is open i want to talk with everyone everyone who wants to put some like uh, some point or something to the world in the real estate business please tell me i'm open to to hear everything and i hope Arjit, we can meet some of the next years face to face i really want that i want to to speak with one of the main entrepreneurs i know that it's you so i hope in some years I will tell you, Arjit, we are in 10 countries. We're helping a lot of families. And I hope that that can be true in some years. So I know, I don't hope. I know it will be. So I will invite you to Mexico, have a beer or a coffee to see we made it. We will do that for sure. High five for this. Thank you, Christian. See you soon and do well. Grow well and disrupt the market the way you are doing. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you.